and welcome to Audio Tree Live. Today is Friday, February 28th, 2020, and we are very, very happy to have Radical Face in the studio with us today. Take it away. Sorry, we don't do smooth transitions. 
We're not very professional. Well, you're super professional. We are? Yeah, I huh? think so. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So yeah. We, uh... Really smooth sound check. Oh, Just okay. So we're good right at that in. part. <laughs> yeah. Had a good talk about breakfast foods. Mm, that's true. Mm -hmm. We learned yeah. that you guys don't really like breakfast foods that much. I like the food. I just don't like eating in the morning. Yeah, I understand yeah. that. It's all right, though. Okay, yeah. so all now right. we're set up. I'm good to go now. Cool. This is pretty normal for us, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, you know, we've been touring for months, and it doesn't get any better. All right, <laughs> to the song. Next one, Crooked Kind. <laughs>
Coffee to Live with Radical Face. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hi there. We're doing good. Well, I shouldn't speak for everyone. I'm doing good. <laughs> everyone else? Doing, yeah? Doing okay. All right. Okay. Good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I'm so happy you're here. I was really looking forward to this one. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, so you guys are out on a tour right now that you said you kind of booked. It wasn't a mistake, but it like has some like funny circumstances around it. Yeah, um, it's it wasn't a mistake at first. It is mm-hmm. now a mistake. Um, <laughs> what I mean is, uh, I we booked this tour when we were um, moving from Florida to California, mm-hmm. and we thought that we would easily set up a place to record and do the next record, and uh, that was totally wrong. It was nine months behind schedule, so the record's halfway done, and mm-hmm. we're touring nothing. <laughs> yeah, just touring. <laughs> But I mean, like, I, I feel like people are pretty stoked because they like you don't tour that often. So you like yeah. people are coming out because they're like, yo, Radical Face is on tour. We're we're banking on that because yeah. we have nothing else to sell. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, you I was just thinking you would think that. So you said that Florida doesn't really have much regulation in terms of like uh, building um, recording studios and stuff. No, Florida doesn't regulate much of anything. Um, <laughs> there's a reason it's always in the news. And uh <laughs> Yeah, so setting up a studio there is, yeah, no one even checks. No one cares. That's so funny. You would think that because of, like, you know, swampland and hurricanes and... Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you would think... (laughs) You would think. That's the logical thing. Uh, It's not a logical place. It is... uh, I'm going to run for governor of Florida. You could. (laughs) Just do more drugs, and I think you'll get in. Yes. Okay. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Um, What made you move to California? Uh, A lot of stuff. It Mm. was... Um, life-wise, just time for an absolute change. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we were touring in 2016, we were trying on cities. Everywhere mm-hmm. we'd go, I, I was kind of seeing if I could live there. Yeah. And uh, actually, uh, Chicago was the front runner, yep. And we ended up in L.A. County, which is funny because I've always hated L.A. I'm mm-hmm. not a fan at all until I got a tour guide, someone that really showed me around. And then I liked it a lot, um, but I had to get someone to show me the the east side. It was a it's a very different world. Mm-hmm. So that's what I've heard. I've heard that when I've never been to LA, but I've heard that like because and I th- I have this like prejudice against it. I'm like ugh LA, yeah. <laughs> and then I feel like if I go, I'm gonna really like it. That's kind of what if you have a guide. Yeah, if okay. you go on your own, no. you will. Yeah, probably. I'll just it. walk down Hollywood Boulevard and be like, Pff. oh, actually, it's one of the grossest places in the city. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. 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 Um, I, you have a blog on your website and I, I was reading all the posts this morning and they're very, I love them. And, um, oh, thank you. yeah, of course. So you uh, just posted one on touring and you said that you've so- recently sort of, um, readjusted how you think about performing. Yes. Can you explain that? Cause I think it's, it's interesting to think about ver- performing versus playing songs. Yeah. Well, that was in my head. Uh, the word performing is loaded. Mm-hmm. So it's this thing where it's, uh, you know, it's spotlights. It's a, I always think of it as like a display of mastery and I'm none of those things. Like I, I mess up all the time. I forget words at every show. doesn't matter mm-hmm. how many times I play it. <laughs> um, so if I think of myself in the space of being a performer, I feel like a fraud, but in my head, I just started saying, why don't I think of it as just going to play songs and have a nice night? Mm-hmm. It's not about uh, being perfect. It's not about even necessarily loving you, the position of what a stage is, because I don't. I always find it a little uncomfortable until I ruin it. Until I say this doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Then and we're I all just fun. in a room together. Exactly. Yeah. Like the more it feels like the living room at the end of a show, the happier I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if it still feels like a stage, I usually now feel like I didn't do a good job. So, mm-hmm. but this was all just kind of. Uh, psychologically I just realized I don't like that word Mm -hmm. I don't like the idea of being a performer because I have no inclination towards it yeah it also sort of um it makes me think of like uh, you're putting on a persona or something when you're performing yes totally and I'm not good at that uh (laughs) I don't know I don't know what I would make up um (laughs) so I I but I felt like I should, you know, like you see all these shows and people just seem really cool and charismatic and yeah and I was like I just I'm a fat guy in a chair. Like, what do I have? <laughs> so, so if I just play songs, I think it feels fine. Yeah. 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 Well, it feels really good in here. So, thank oh, you so okay, much for cool. being here. And I'm a you can nervous. roll into your next two songs. Oh yeah, let's play more. They'll get slowly better. That's how we do it. <laughs>
Um, by the end, we'll be almost together. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this one, you guys ready? Okay. Just whistle into your instrument, it's fine. Yeah. Yet again, we ruin the transition. Oh, I forgot. I thought that was a technical thing. We should let our friends
I'm sorry. What are the words? Okay, I got them now. Watching Audio Tree Live with Radical Face. You got a good vibrato on your uh, on your whistle. Girl, I practice. <laughs> <laughs> also, someone in the chat, like in the one of the first songs, said that that big violin has frets. <laughs> I just am not good at where to put my fingers. So, you know, any little bit. Of help. I just love that they call it a big violin. <laughs> it works. Man. What? So it isn't a cello. No, it's it's not a cello. It's a. I'm putting on my nerd hat. That's okay. why I, uh, it's it's called a vial in English, mm -hmm. a viola da gamba in mm -hmm. uh, most other languages. Uh, it's like if a guitar had a bow more than if a cello had frets. It's actually it's actually related to a guitar uh, more closely than anything. Interesting. Uh, the way it's constructed, mm -hmm. the frets and all that stuff. Uh, back when uh, the Moors from North Africa conquered Spain and Portugal, like you know, like ten hundred, like one thousand year one thousand. They brought these instruments or their ancestors, mm -hmm. and that gave us the guitar, the lute, you know, with the little baby angels, <laughs> and, and that instrument. Mm -hmm. And after they left, the Europeans didn't know what they had been given. And, and funny enough, this uh, this particular instrument, you see the sound holes on it. Yeah. The Europeans used those all the way up into the 19th century. Interesting. In Islamic decorative arts, those are the flaming swords of Allah. But they they got so distant from the source uh, that they had no idea. They just they just used them everywhere. But uh, no, it's it's a vial. Mm -hmm. VDGSA.org. If you're <laughs> curious about the Viola Gamba Society of America, 
doing my part. It's a beautiful instrument, Thanks. both in t you know sound and also structure. It's very very particular, uh -huh. and and it, it kind of died out probably around 1780 or something. It was more expensive to own one of these than a horse. So you know what happens in the 1780s is all the revolutions. Yeah. And these were aristocratic instruments. Also, uh -huh. you can't play them standing up, and you can't sit in front of your employer. So it's all for rich people, pretty much. Oh, it's a so so it, instrument. You know. Yeah. But it's cool. I, and these days, uh, poor people play it. Don't worry. <laughs> I can't afford my strings. So. <laughs> well, thank you. No problem. Um, ben. Yeah. I have a very simple songwriting question for you. Okay. And I always think about this. Do you do uh, lyrics or melody first? Or does uh, it come at once? Or some other fourth option? I actually kind of have a rule with mm -hmm. songwriting, which is uh, never start in the same place because you tend to get similar results over and over. So okay. I force myself over the course of a record to have ones that are lyric first, mm -hmm. uh, ones that are drums first, ones that are guitars first, things that are, are very different starting points. Yeah. Because uh, otherwise, I just go into my habits. I play guitar the same way all the time. But when I have to play to something that is already written, mm -hmm. I play guitar in a different way. So uh, the easiest one for me is to start with melody. Yeah. But because of that, I take it away from myself a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, do you, uh, when on your records, are you playing most of the instruments? Yeah, on the records, they're, they're solo albums. Except yeah. if there are strings, Josh plays them. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, yeah, I pretty much just lock myself away for a long time and yeah. uh, get really depressed, and then <laughs> whatever comes out after a year is what I put out. Yeah. yeah. Um, so would you say that, do you have a preference of recording versus uh, playing out? Oh, I love recording. Yeah. Um, that's really the biggest reason I don't tour a lot outside mm -hmm. of uh, limited ability to play live well, but the, the studio I could be in all day every day. Yeah. I never get sick of it. Yeah, and you just, uh, you have a record label now that you're putting out releases that you're also recording. Yeah, uh, it's it's in the, the same garage that we have set up. Nice. And uh, yeah, we record all kinds of stuff. And, uh, you know, we were already doing all the work outside of um, distribution. Mm -hmm. So we figured why not just yeah. find someone to help us with that. Yeah, well, yeah. that's awesome. No, it's fun. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for you having us. It sounded incredible. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You can go into your last song. Sure. Play one mean one before we go.
right across your walls And the birds up there mock me And the scenery's turned wicked Your name is trapped beneath my tongue All of the roads are worn now each joy Thank you guys so much for being here. Thank what you for a, having us. What a lovely day to end the week. Um, uh, they're on tour right now. If you're in Chicago, they'll be at Thalia Hall tonight. It's going to be a great show. Uh, uh, tour dates elsewhere are at RadicalFace.com. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you to the camera and lighting crew for hooking it up. And thank you to everyone in the studio for making it happen. Thank you, everyone. Sound-wise. Um, and uh, thank you for watching. And we'll see you later. Goodbye. All right, so you guys want to do it for real now?